The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of this station, JVC Broadcasting Management, or its sponsors. Good morning. I hope everybody is off to a great start today. You're listening to Money in the Morning with Mitch Goldberg. And you're listening on 103.9 FMLI News Radio. Thank you so much for joining us. We've got a couple of things to talk about. Just want to do some housekeeping first. I want to thank my incredible producer at LI News Radio, Sebastiano. You rock, my friend. Thank you so much for doing such a great job. And I want to thank the GM, the general manager at LI News Radio, David Levenstein, for being such a great radio coach and wingman for me and if you are interested in having your own program on LA News Radio reach out to LA News Radio and get in touch with De- David Levenstein good guy good friend okay we begin the day today with the Dow futures up 234 points S&P futures up 0.85% up 35 points Schnazek futures as usual is up the most on a pre, you know, futures pre trading up day, up 167 points. That's 1.34%. And when I, 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 the reason I say that is because when the futures are up or during regular trading, the markets are up. Typically, the NASDAQ is up or down the most, depending on how the action goes for that day, because it has the most exposure to technology. And technology is what we call volatile, high beta. I'm not saying it's not good. I'm not saying it's not bad. I'm just saying that the tech stocks typically move more than, let's say, bank stocks or drug stocks. Okay. So that's why you get the most outsized moves in the NASDAQ. Then the S&P 500 has more of a blend of consumer staples type stocks, companies like Procter and Gamble, you know, uh, Stocks that are considered a little bit less volatile, consumer staples, um, healthcare. It's a big, bigger smattering of of those kinds of stocks. So it doesn't move quite as much. And then the Dow futures is even more so like than, than the S and P. Even though it's much, much fewer stocks, the makeup of the Dow Jones industrial average of the 30 stocks, it's, it is a pretty diversified, group of stocks. So just so you know, you can't invest directly into an index, but you could invest in a security that tracks or mimics an index. And when we talk about diversification, yes, it's a strategy that we use to reduce risk, but you all probably know this already. It doesn't necessarily protect your portfolio from going down in a generally down market. Let's take a look at oil. Oil is off a little bit down about 65, 64 cents the barrel. But it's up about four bucks in the last week, so I'm not really jumping up and down for joy here. And the 10-year yield has backed off, was in the three sixes. Now it's about 3.588%. It's really important to follow the 10-year yield. And the reason is so many interest rates are keyed off of the 10-year yield, in particular the 30-year mortgage rate. So if the 10-year yield goes up and it's been moving up a lot, it does affect consumer rates, affects mortgage rates, and it also affects how we value uh, stocks, uh, company, corporate future earnings. So the lower the rate on the 10-year, the higher of a value we could assign to stocks to their to a company's future earnings which means we could assign a higher value to a stock in other words we could say a stock deserves a higher pe ratio okay price over earnings is the pe ratio i don't like pray at the altar of low pe ratios i don't actually think um a low pe ratio automatically means a stock is a value and I don't automatically think uh, a stock trading at a year low is automatically a value. Sometimes those tell you more to me more often than not that a company is doing poorly and the stock is following suit. It's just a matter of time until the earnings plunge and then that low PE 
because the earnings go down. So a $10 stock with a dollar earnings is a 10 P ratio, but then those earnings go down to 50 cents and all of a sudden it jumps to a P ratio of 20 and so on. So I don't really think um, low P ratio and a year low are really good valuation metrics. It just tells you what I just told you that it looks like the outlook is not really that good for a particular company. Now there are some sectors that typically command low PE ratios because the growth of the sector is just not there anymore. The sector has matured, but that, that is a little bit different of a story to me. I also don't think a stock with a necessarily high PE ratio or stock at its your high necessarily means the stock is overvalued because if you, said that you there's I could think of so many winners that you would have missed. Now I'm I'm not saying that you should toss any idea of valuation out the window when you buy a stock. But what I am saying is don't be so uh rigid in your thinking that low PE ratio 52 week low or high PE ratio 52 week high actually mean anything. Um it's just data points. You have to figure out what is behind those data points. Uh, typically, markets go higher. They reach new highs. Even, you know, we do have bear markets, but then markets go back up again. That's been the pattern. I don't see any reason why that would change. Uh, if it doesn't change, then I think we're all in a whole lot of trouble because ultimately your retirement, your college savings, everything you do is dependent on stock prices going up over time. And the reason stock prices work is because bull markets percentage-wise go up more than bear markets percentage-wise go down. That's why the market makes progress over time. It could be three steps forward, two steps back once in a while, or two steps forward, one step back. But overall, that's why the market recovers and you find new companies that take over the averages. Those become anointed as the new leaders and then we go on to new highs. We don't know in advance what those new leaders are going to be, which is one reason why just owning the index like an S&P 500 fund for many people is actually um, a very, very good idea. So let's talk about a couple of other things. Every day we have a stock of the day. Just It could be more than one stock, stocks that make the market move. But today's big stock is Disney. If you haven't heard, uh, numbers were good, but their subscriber losses for Disney Plus were a lot less than what was expected. Uh, streaming is a very profitable, high-margin business for companies, which is why pure play streamers typically have gotten higher valuations and the stocks have gone up a lot. With Disney, they're holding their own in the streaming business. They're cutting about five, five and a half billion dollars of cost. They're going to let, let go of about 7,000 employees. That's less than 5% of their total workforce, by the way. So I'm not saying we should cheer that, but the company has to make sure that they are running mean and lean and reinstating the dividend. As a result, the stock is up over $7 a share. It is a Dow, uh, it is a Dow component. <laughs> so, <coughs> excuse me, that is helping to lead the way. So Disney up, up today. Uh, it's year high is 157. That could mean it has a lot of room to grow, but even before it reached its year high, it's been higher than that in the past. So Disney's doing well. They're also making the ESPN a separate division. The, uh, Bob Iger, the CEO, said that they're not spinning it off. Procter & Gamble had pretty decent earnings. A stock that we've been talking about a lot here is Boeing a couple days ago. I think Wednesday or Tuesday was up a lot. But that's 214, and Merck is up quite a bit. Today it's up just $0.96 cents pre-market trading. But... You take a look at Disney, Procter, Boeing, and Merck. These are major companies, all in the S&P 500, all in the Dow Jones. They are doing very well, and that looks to continue because every chart I look at in these companies says, buy, you know, well, I have to be careful what I say. They look good in the charts, okay? 
Uh, it looks like investors are buying them up. That's why they're going up, right? So I, I just feel like there is a little bit more reason to be bullish on the stock market than uh, how people went into in the beginning of the year. So that's the story for today. By the way, folks, if you haven't done this yet, the LI News radio app is phenomenal. It just works perfect. You download the app. It's there. You tap on the arrow and you get to listen to LI News Radio wherever you are, whenever you go on vacation, whenever you're out of the region. So check out the app, LI News Radio app. You're listening to Money in the Morning with Mitch Goldberg. Thank you so much for joining us. We will be right back after these brief messages with more good stuff coming your way. Commuters out there, thank you so much for tuning in to LI News Radio 103.9. You are listening to the show Money in the Morning with Mitch Goldberg. I'm Mitch. If there's anything that you would like to discuss or if you want to follow up on the conversation with a one on one, check out clientfirststrategy.com. That's my company's website and reach out to me. All my contact information could be found there. Plus, a little bit more about our firm, who we are, what we do, and, you know, how we do our thing. Um, but I will tell you, it's all about you. And we named the firm Client First Strategy. We either name it, uh, <clears throat> you know, Mitch Goldberg Investments or something like that. We named it after our clients because our clients come first. It's the, the firm exists solely at the service and best interests of its clients. So we just checked out the futures. It seems the pattern of the week is this. Market was down Monday, up Tuesday, down Wednesday, looks to be up today, and it's moving at about the same percentages either way. So if this carries uh, forward, we'll probably have a down day tomorrow and a down week, but that remains to be seen. And uh, don't make any buy or sell recommendations based on that very, very brief analysis of a four-day pattern okay hopefully you hopefully you know that okay and when i talk about roth iras and i bring up taxes and you know irs and tax withholding and tax rates just remember it's up to you to make sure you know your situation to consult your tax advisor because i ain't your mama your papa and i'm sure as heck not your cpa <laughs> Okay, I'm not a tax advisor and I don't give tax advice. Okay, so we've got a couple of other things to talk about. Manhattan rents. I know, I know, we're in Long Island, but we are tied inextricably to Manhattan and rents reached an all time high. So I've always said Manhattan always comes back. It did come back. Rents are at an all time high. And the way I see it, in my experience, when rents and home prices rise in Manhattan, it starts there and then kind of spills over into Nassau County and then moves over into Suffolk. When home prices start to fall, it seems they typically start to fall in Suffolk, then Nassau, and then Manhattan. Just a pattern that I've always noticed. But right now, rents are holding up. They're not just holding up, they're doing extremely well. The reason for that is because the labor market is so strong. And uh, the the uh, first time unemployment claims came out today much lower than expected, which is bullish for the labor market. Fewer people filing unemployment claims. And even though you've heard of some high profile layoffs, it hasn't spread yet to the overall market. Um, I think a lot of businesses are loath to lay off people because it was so hard to find them. And the labor market continues to be strong. And while that happens, that is very good for the housing market, the rental market. And we've talked about this uh, almost every day. I don't personally, uh, I don't expect a crash in the housing market. People talk about, oh, the housing market's going to crash. There's not enough housing. That's the issue. 
millennials have come of age. They're in their 40s. They have their two cars in the driveway. They have their, you know, first child is probably in, in kindergarten or something. Then maybe, maybe even second, third grade. And you know, they're buying houses and millennials are, are right behind them. So I don't think we have much to worry about. Maybe just houses could drop a tiny bit or not go up as quickly. But I really don't think, uh, I, I think talking about a crash is good for clickbait. It's good to get you to watch a YouTube video with you know, the, the housing market's about to crash. But I, I actually think for a professional uh, to come out and say something like that is irresponsible. But by the way, I haven't heard any of the professionals saying that, okay? Wholesale egg prices. I know we all talk about eggs. Well, I do. I love eggs. And uh, I like them sunny side up. I like an omelet, but I digress. I like to go to diners and have my eggs. That's what I do. You know, I have my poached eggs on toasted rye. How about you? That's, that's my thing. Right. So wholesale egg prices have plunged, and you'll start to see that in the supermarket. Millions and millions of chickens had to be uh, culled because of an avian flu. So you're going to start to see that come down. And that should help lower the inflation rate a little bit. That's a nationwide, that's actually a global phenomenon what's happening with eggs. But nationwide, that'll help lower the CPI a little bit. Tax refunds. Now, I speak to people all the time who are excited to do their taxes because they expect to get a tax refund. Tax refunds are expected to be down this year because a lot of the child tax credits, stimulus, things like that uh, are, not, are not, we're not around for 2022. Having said that, a tax refund kind of drives me a little crazy. It, it, I'm glad you're happy when you get a tax refund. Don't get me wrong. It, it's, it's delightful. It's a great feeling. You get that check in the mail or it hits your bank account, you know, because it's electronic. But what the IRS is doing is they're giving you that money because you actually paid the IRS too much money in taxes. And it's really hard to get the exact in and out. But if your tax refund <laughs> is substantial enough that it's paying for your vacation or it's the just in time to help you make a mortgage payment or a car payment, you're doing something wrong. You need to withhold a little bit more money uh, when you pay taxes. A tax refund is, in my opinion, you're... You're loaning the IRS money uh, for, for free. They don't pay you interest on it. But if you owe the IRS money, they charge you a lot of interest. So it's just not really a fair fight. So I don't want people getting tax refunds. I want people to get as close to even either owing a tiny bit or getting back a tiny bit. But I don't like to see uh, substantial tax refunds. And I know in my financial planning practice, when I speak with people and they have, and they're expecting a, a tax refund and they're excited about it, the first thing we do is uh, change their tax withholding. Uh, and we do that because it, it's just not really good personal finance. Okay. Let's talk about artificial intelligence. Uh, I posted this on social media yesterday. We've been talking about uh, Microsoft invested for the third investment into a company called OpenAI in San Francisco. The last investment was uh, $10 billion. And it's, it's, a really, it's, it's a really big deal because OpenAI has what we think is the next big thing to come from the, the internet, artificial intelligence chatbots where instead of searching for something like talked about this yesterday about the Gettysburg Address, it'll actually spit out a perfectly well-written report for you that summarizes everything. And you can either get it in a page, five-page, ten-page, college level, high school level, doctorate level, whatever you want, um, which is why a lot of schools are saying you're not allowed to use this tool because you're just having someone else do all the work for you and you're not doing any of it. But... Uh, it's interesting, yesterday, Google stock plunged about 10%, which is a huge amount for a company as big as Google to plunge that much in one day. Uh, Alphabet is what we call it. You know, Google changed your name to Alphabet. 
So Alphabet plunges because in a demo of Google's chatbot, which they just came out with called Bard, it actually was getting wrong answers on what were relatively simple queries. And they did this in a demonstration and it just, it was really like embarrassing for, uh, for Alphabet. So that's, that's why the stock plunged yesterday. And also, uh, Microsoft is now believed to actually give Google a run for its money in search. All right, so these are the things that are on my mind. I thank you so much for listening. It's all about making you better with your money. Uh, money in the Morning with Mitch Goldberg on LI News Radio every weekday morning at 9 a.m., 93, 103.9 FM. I hope you'll join us again tomorrow morning. We'll go through the week's news. We'll go through what we expect the next week. And we'll talk a little bit about personal finance. Have a great weekend. Well, I should have a great day, everybody. It's too short to say have a great weekend. Securities and investment advisory services are offered through Next Financial Group Incorporated, member of FINRA SIPC. Client is not an affiliate of Next Financial Group Incorporated. All the views expressed are those of Mitchell Goldberg and Client First Strategy and not those of Next Financial Group Incorporated. Views are general in nature and not intended to be investment advice. Any discussion of individual security should not be construed as a recommendation or solicitation by our presenters. Next Financial Group Incorporated does not provide tax advice.